Do you want your Legion Go joysticks to feel a little bit more like this? If so, then stick around, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. With this mod, you'll get roughly twice the tension, which makes it feel very similar to a DualSense controller. Instead of just going with Trust Me Bro, I've got this simple device to test pull force, so let's check out the stock joysticks. After a few tries, I found that it's taking roughly 0.5 to 0.6 newtons to move the joystick. And now when we try it on this modified joystick, you can see that it takes about 1 newton of pull force to move the joystick, so it's roughly double. A few important notes and disclaimers, if you're not comfortable with taking apart devices, this is going to be a very difficult mod for you. So of course, do this mod at your own discretion if you choose to, but be warned that it is not necessarily an easy mod. If you do decide to modify your joysticks and use this video as a guide, I recommend watching the video in its entirety because I do move fairly quickly, but there's a number of important notes that are throughout the entire video. I do recommend that you have a good tool set if you're going to take on this mod. If you don't have good tools, it's going to be even more difficult than it already is. If you're looking for a good tool set, I'll link one down in the description below. If you are looking for the joysticks, you can get them from Handheld DIY. I'll leave a link down below in the description. You can also use this video as a general joystick replacement as it's going to be the exact same steps if you choose to go with the stock joysticks. Now with the disclaimers out of the way, let's dive into it. And now for the required tools, we need a screwdriver size PH00 and PH1. We need a pair of tweezers, plastic spudger, a guitar pick, new set of joysticks, some captain tape, as well as a hot air gun or hair dryer if you don't have one. We'll get started with our joystick swaps. We're going to start off with the left controller first though, it is the easier of the two. And the first thing that we need to do is to pull off the joystick cap. If you've never taken this off before, it's going to be a little bit tighter than you expect, but don't worry, it is fine to pull it a little bit harder to get it off. And now that it's off, we can go ahead and take the screws off. For the rear cover, we have four screws and there was our PH00. Make sure that you use the right screwdriver head because if you use the wrong one, there's a chance that you might strip them. Once you've ensured that you have the correct screwdriver, you could take out the four screws. They come out fairly easily. This is what the screw looks like for your reference. One tip that I recommend is to have a safe place for your screws. The iFixit kit actually has little compartments on the lid, so I like to put them in order that I take them out so I can easily identify which is which. Now that we've got the screws out, we just need to take off the rear cover, so you should be able to pull it apart, but if not, you can use a guitar pick to help out. What I suggest doing is running along the seam to make sure that all of the clips are unclipped. Once it's unclipped, you should be able to just remove it. There's no wires or anything, so you could just put it aside and then move on to the next step. The next step is to unplug all the cords, starting with the battery, which is the red and yellow one, as well as the black and red. You can just pull those straight out. There's one ribbon cable that has a little flap that you need to lift up, so you go from the back and just lift it straight up, and then you can pull it out. Make sure that that flap is up anytime you remove or reinsert the ribbon cable. The third kind of clip that you need to deal with is one that pushes straight down, so you need to pull it up. It's easiest to go from both sides to make sure that you lift it up evenly. For all of these clips that are hard to access, I do strongly recommend using a plastic spudger because you should be able to get in there with the pointy tip and just slowly pry at it without damaging anything. And here's a quick overview of the cables that we're going to remove starting with the battery first. I usually like to lift all the tabs before I start unplugging things, so I've already done that off camera, so let's go ahead and quickly unplug the cords. Make sure that you handle all the cables with care. Ribbon cables can be a little bit delicate and you don't want to rip any of them. Now that we've finished with the wires, we're going to take the trigger off. So there's one screw here that you need to remove, and that's a PH1 size screwdriver. Make sure that you actually do switch over to a PH1, otherwise you're likely going to start stripping some screws. The screw itself is at the bottom of the trigger. It's really hard to miss, so let's go ahead and take that out. And this is what the screw looks like in case you need a reference. And now to take off the trigger cover, we just need to compress the trigger and then slide it upwards. There's two little grooves that slide onto the trigger itself. And these just slide on to this part of the trigger that's kind of flat at the back here that goes straight across. That's where you're going to connect on to when you reassemble. Next, we need to disconnect the left bumper. This is required to actually lift the board. So what you need to do is take a plastic spudger and pry back on a little plastic clip to release it. So this is something that uh, you have to be kind of careful that you don't break it because you don't want to apply too much pressure. But it does actually take quite a bit of pressure to get this to unclick. So just be careful with it. Uh, take your time. But once you get it to unclick, then you can start to lift the board. So you can see here, it took me about 20 seconds. And now that it's loose, we can just leave it the way it is and move on to the next step. Next, we're going to remove three screws that are holding the plastic board cover down. These are PH1 size screws. So make sure that you have the correct screwdriver. 
The first two screws are pretty straightforward, but on the bottom one, just be careful because there is a tactile switch right beside it, so make sure that you don't damage that. And as usual, this is what the screws look like for your reference. Now that we've removed the three screws, we can go ahead and start to lift the board. There is one cable that's attached underneath, so be careful, don't pull it out too hard. Also be on the lookout for any cables that may have got stuck, don't pull this out too quickly. Taking a look at the cable that's still attached, there is a little flap that you have to lift up, and this cable's a little different than some of the other ones. You don't pull it straight out, it actually has two little wings, I'll call them. It's more of a cable that you place into the slot and then close the flap. Now that we've got the cable detached, we can go ahead and put the front of the controller away because we're not going to need that right now and we can focus on getting the joystick off. Now we can begin to remove the joystick, so the first thing that we need to do is remove the dust cover, so you just need to grip onto it hard and pull straight out, and it should come off without too much struggle. Next we need to remove the protective sticker that's around the joystick here, you can grab a pair of tweezers and just pull it up. And then just set it aside, we're going to put it back on when we're done. And now we have two screws to take off on the joystick, so these are both PH00 size, so make sure that you have the right bit. Otherwise, you're probably just going to damage the screw. And as usual, here's what the screw looks like for your reference. Now we can remove the last two screws on the board, these are going to require the PH1 size screwdriver. Once you take out these two screws, you're going to be able to lift the board off of the cover, and this is what the screw looks like. Now that you've removed the screws, you can go ahead and lift the board. Just make sure that you don't have any ribbon cables that are stuck, so make sure that you don't pull it out without double checking that. You'll find that the joystick is dangling, but we're going to remove this very soon, so just make sure to separate it from the plastic cover, and then we can worry about the joystick. Now to remove the joystick, we have to lift up the tab on this ribbon cable here, just to make sure that we can pull it out, and once you have the tab out, it should pull straight out. If you're curious, move around the joystick, feel the tension of the stock joystick. And then grab your replacement joystick and then test that one out. You're going to see that there's quite a dramatic difference in the tension. Now we're going to begin with the reassembly. So we're going to take our new joystick. We're going to lift the tab up and we need to plug in the ribbon cable. I usually push it in with my finger, but if you're having trouble with that, you can also grab a pair of tweezers and use that to help it go in. I've done this so many times that I only use it really when it's a tight spot. Once you insert the ribbon cable, make sure that you pull the tab back on the locking mechanism so that it locks the cable in place and give it a slight tug just to make sure that it's actually secure. You'll need to feed this ribbon cable through this hole in the plastic cover, just make sure that you have it on the right side of the board. You'll need to make sure that it's gone behind this board so that it can plug in correctly. Now we're going to line up the board and we're going to put in our first couple of screws. For both of these screws, you're going to use your PH1 size screwdriver and make sure that you tighten it firmly. Now we're gonna finish attaching the joystick. We have two screws that are PH00 size and they're quite tiny. Make sure that you have the proper screwdriver head in and then once you're done the screws, you can go ahead and put that plastic ring sticker back on. After the ring sticker, we're gonna go ahead and put the dust cap back on. So make sure that you line it up properly and then just apply pressure to push it in. Then just give it a test to make sure that it spins freely. We'll start off first with the ribbon cable, but we need to attach the board to the front shell. So taking a look at the front shell, there's a single ribbon cable that's more of a place in style is the best way I could describe it. And I'm going to go ahead and take out all the buttons just so you can see what there is in case they fall out on you. You don't have to take them out to do this. Just be careful not to lose anything. That spring is very easy to lose. Now for this ribbon cable, we're going to make sure that the tab is lifted and then we're going to place it inside. There's two little wings that you want to make sure are on the other side of that plastic so that it stays in place. Once you've got it lined up, just put the tab back and then it'll be nice and secure. If your buttons were removed, now would be the time to put them back in, so make sure you have the D-pad and the three buttons. After you're done putting the buttons in, make sure that you put the spring back into place. It's in that little rectangle box right in the center and then take this button here and make sure that the hook is on the top and click it in. We're going to be adjusting that again later, but it's just to keep it in place for now. Next, we can attach the board to the front cover. Make sure that the buttons do not fall out and that you don't have any cables stuck underneath. While we're putting this together and lining it up, there is one part that is a very particular way that it needs to go in, and that's the release button at the bottom. It's a little bit strange. You need to have part of it under the board and part of it sticking up. So it's like the right side of it is underneath the board and the left side with the hook. It's a little bit difficult to demo here what I mean, but you can see the little hook at the top. I have it sitting on top of the plastic and then the right side of it at the back needs to get tucked in underneath the board. So it's almost like you have it at an angle when you're putting it in. 
You also need to ensure that the spring is in place because that's what caused the button to come out. If you don't have the spring in there, this release button is not going to work. I'm spending a little bit longer explaining this because it really is a strange setup, but uh, once you get it and you have it clicked down, you should be able to click the button in and it'll spring back out. If it's not moving at all, that's likely because the right side is not underneath the board. Once you've gotten it in correctly, you'll see that it springs in and out like it should. And if you've done everything correctly, the rail on the side will be completely flush to the shell. Now we'll screw the board down to the shell, so there's three screws that use a PH1 size screwdriver. And this is what the screws look like in case you're wondering. And just like we mentioned on the disassembly, the first two screws are fairly straightforward, but the one at the bottom here has a tactile switch, make sure that you do not damage it. I found that I had to screw it in at a slight angle. Our next step is to add the shoulder button, so just like before, we need to pry that little arm away so that we can fit it in there. So pull that away and then we're going to try to tuck it inside. And it should click into place. You might need to play with this for a little bit to get it in there, but once you get it, then uh, it should be pretty obvious because it'll be nice and tight. And once you think you have it in, just test out the button to make sure that it feels all right. You know, click it in, make sure that there's no movement because this is going to need to be in place to close the controller. Now we're going to reattach the trigger. This is what the screw looks like that we're going to put in. You're going to need a PH1 size screwdriver. What we're going to do is we're going to slide it onto this back piece and there's two little grooves that you have to line up if you remember from earlier. So what we need to do is we need to press down the trigger and then you can slide it straight on. Now we're going to switch to our PH1 screwdriver and what you need to make sure that you do is put the screw in nice and tight. If you don't, there's going to be some movement in the trigger. So don't be scared to tighten this one fairly tight. Obviously don't strip it and don't crack the plastic. And now we're gonna move on to the cables. Make sure that you do the battery last. And what I would suggest is using a spudger. It's gonna be helpful. And make sure that all of the tabs are open before you try to insert the cables. Once you have the cables inserted, you could push down the tabs or the clips and make sure that everything is nice and tight. I strongly recommend double checking everything just to make sure that they're all plugged in so that you don't have to open it up again in case there's a mistake. And now we're going to start to clip the controller back together. Make sure that you line everything up properly and don't force it. Make sure that there's no wires hanging out the side. That does happen sometimes. And once it's clicked together, we can put our last screws in. So there's four screws that are PH00. Make sure that you're using the correct head. Otherwise, you can once again strip some screws. And as usual, here's what the screw looks like just to make sure that you have the correct one. By now, you should only have four screws remaining. So you're probably not too worried about that. And now our last step for the actual physical repair is to attach the joystick cap. One end is flat, so make sure that you have it lined up. And now that it's done, give it a test. It feels a lot better than stock. You can compare it to the other one before you move on to the next one, just so you can see the actual difference. And that's how you do the left controller. So we're gonna move on to the right controller next. Now we're gonna move on to our right controller. So we have the bottom mouse sensor and the sticker that we have to contend with on this side. We also have a trackpad at the front and at the back, we also have a scroll wheel. So we have a few extra things to worry about while we take this apart. Now we'll start off by taking off the screws. There's four screws that are PH00 size. They come out fairly easily. And this is what the screws look like, just in case you're wondering. Now we need to remove the mouse gate sticker. So to do this, we're gonna use a hot air gun or a hair dryer if you don't have a hot air gun. We're gonna use sweeping motions, make sure you don't get too close. And I would also recommend protecting the button and the mouse sensor. You can do this with a small piece of captain tape. I recommend putting just enough to cover the sensor so that it doesn't stop the sticker from getting heated up. So you can heat up the sticker. It's gonna take a little bit of time. You might end up needing to do this a few times before it starts to get loose. Once you're confident that you've heated it up enough, you can take your plastic spudger, pop up the corner, and grab it with a pair of tweezers. You can pull it off slowly, and you may need to heat it up again. The reason we use heat is to loosen the adhesive, so hopefully it stays on the sticker so you can reuse it. And now with the skate sticker off, we can go ahead and open up the shell, so it should be able to come apart now. Just be mindful of the scroll wheel that you're not pulling on it without pushing that in. You can also use a guitar pick to help the clips out if they're not coming loose. I didn't have to, but uh, you may need to. And the nice thing about the rear cover is there's no wires, so you don't have to worry about any of that. So let's put that aside and move on to the next step. Now our next step is to remove the joystick cap. So you're going to need to grip it firmly and apply pressure outwards. So it's going to take a little more pressure than you probably expect, but don't worry, it'll be fine. It's just uh, a little bit hard the first time. Our next step is to unplug the cables. There's seven total and you want to start with the battery and you're also going to need a plastic spudger to loosen up the tabs. 
just like the left side, there's a number of tabs that you have to lift, and these are the ones that you lift straight up. So I recommend using a plastic spudger to get in there because it's a little bit tight in some spots. Once you've got all of them popped up, then you can start to pull the cables out. Make sure that they're all up before you pull anything. Now we can go ahead and pull out all the cables. Make sure that the clips don't accidentally fall down again. That does happen, so just keep your spudger handy. You may need to push them back up again. And ribbon cables are kind of sensitive, so make sure that you're gentle with them. And now that the cables are done, we can move on to the trigger cap. So there's one single screw holding it on, and this is a PH1 size screwdriver, so make sure that you've switched to the correct one so you don't strip it. The screw is likely pretty tight, so you may need to add some pressure. And this is what the screw looks like, just for your reference. Now to take the trigger off, all you need to do is press the trigger down and then pull it straight up. If you look at the trigger cap here, there's two little grooves that slide onto the back of the trigger, so just keep that in mind when you're putting it back on. Next we'll remove the board from the front cover. These are PH1 screws and there's three of them to remove, two on the side and one at the top. And as usual, here's what the screws look like for your reference in case you ever mix them up. And with the screws out, we can now lift the board. Be careful because there's still a cable that's attached that's for the RGB ring. So just carefully lift it. Make sure there's no other cables caught. And the cable that's still plugged in has a little tab at the back that you need to lift up. And this cable is a little different than the other ones. You don't pull it straight out. This one you actually lift up. It has two little wings on the side that hold it in place. So this is one that when you put it back, you need to place it in there and then close the tab. And when you're pulling away the front cover, be careful of the buttons, make sure they didn't drop any like I did here. So make sure that if you did, you put them with the shell and don't lose anything. There's also a spring you have to be careful for. Now we're gonna remove the dust cap for the joystick as well as the ring that protects the board. So first for the dust cap, you just need to grip onto it and pull it straight out. One thing to note for the cap and the stem is that there's one side that's flat and one that's rounded. So when you put it back on, it's gonna to need to go the correct way. So just keep that in mind. For removing the sticker, it's fairly straightforward. Just use tweezers and put it aside. We need to put it on later. And with that out of the way, we can now remove the joystick. So we need a PH00 size screwdriver. Make sure that you switch over. And then there's two screws above and below the joystick. And watch out for the screws. They're pretty tiny, as you can see here. Our next step is to remove two screws from the corners of the board. It is a PH1 size, so make sure that you switch over. I'm sure by now you've realized that we switch screwdrivers pretty much every couple steps. So let's take these two out, make sure that you have the right bit. And for your reference, this is what they look like in case you get it mixed up. Now you can lift the board off of the plastic cover, make sure that no cables are stuck. In my case, there actually was one that was stuck. I guess it kind of fell back in. So make sure that that's not the case on yours. And if it is, make sure to remove it first so you don't damage it. And once you've ensured that there's no other cables stuck, you can put the plastic part aside. And then our next step is gonna to be to actually remove our joystick and replace it with a new one. Now for the last step of removing the joystick module, you just need to lift up the plastic tab and then you can pull out the cable. It should come fairly easily. And once you've got it out, we can go ahead and replace this with our new one. I put a red dot on mine to identify it so you can see that it's a fresh module. So slide it in, you can use your finger to push it in or use a pair of tweezers if you need to. Then press the tab back down and make sure that it's fully secured. Now we can line up the board and put it back onto the plastic cover. So make sure that you have the corners lined up for the screw holes. There's two screws that we're gonna put in. When putting them on, make sure that you put them on nice and tight and you're gonna need to switch over to a PH1 screwdriver. So make sure that you have the correct one. And for a quick refresher, here's what the screw looks like once again. So put the two screws in and then we're gonna move on to the joystick. So for the joystick, we have two more screws that take the PH00 size screwdriver. The two screws go above and below the joystick and they're very tiny. Here's a refresher of what they look like. Now we can put the dust cover and the ring sticker back on. The ring sticker protects the board, so make sure you don't forget that. So let's put that on first. And now we can put the dust cover on. So the dust cover goes on a specific way. The stem here has one side that's flat and one that's round. So make sure that that corresponds with the dust cap. So just make sure that you have it lined up correctly, put it on and press it in, and it should go on without too much of a struggle. Now we can begin to reattach the front shell of the controller. So there's going to be a RGB cable that you need to connect. So make sure you don't forget about that. A quick reminder that this cable is different than the rest of them. So this one you place into the slot rather than pushing it in. So you just place it in, make sure that the two wings are inside, and then you can just close the tab. Then make sure that the cable is secure and then you can start to put the two back together. Make sure that everything lines up and that there's no cables that are getting pinched. Just make sure to line it up mostly because there's one more step we need to do before we screw it down and that's for that release button. For the release button, the first thing is to make sure that your spring is handy and make sure to put it in this little slot at the bottom. It's like a little rectangle. 
and in the middle there's a little stem that sticks out so put it on top of that. Once you've made sure that it's in the right spot, you can grab your button, make sure that the hook is at the top, and when you put it in, make sure that the hook is, I guess, at the top layer. And you actually need to get the left side of the button to be underneath the board. So once it's in, it's kind of like it's at an angle, and once you have it down, you should have a springy button again. If it's not springy, either the spring isn't lined up properly, or maybe the button is getting caught somewhere. And once you're sure that it's lined up, we can move on to screwing in the board. So there's three screws that use a PH1 style screwdriver. This is what the screw looks like as a reminder. I also recommend that you make sure no cables are getting pinched or underneath. And now we can go ahead and add the trigger cap back on. So to do this, you need to make sure that those two grooves line up on the back here. And when you're sliding it on, you need to push the trigger down and then press it in. Once the cap is on, we're going to use this one screw that requires a PH1 screwdriver. And what I recommend is to make sure that you tighten this quite tight. The first time I did this, I didn't do it tight enough and there was a bit of a wobble. So make sure that you screw it in nice and tight. And once you've got the trigger secured, we can move on to the cables. So the last cable to plug in is the battery, but we've got seven to reattach. And now we can put all the cables back in. Make sure to use your spudger to lift the tabs before you do so. Otherwise the cables won't go in properly. And also be careful. And once you've got them all inserted, make sure that you push all of the tabs down. And I would recommend double checking every cord just to make sure there's nothing wrong. So you don't have to open this up again. That's also something that happened to me on the first go around and it's not fun. Our next step is to add the joystick cap back on. So this is fairly simple. Just line it up, make sure that the flat edge is lined up and push it in. Make sure to apply enough pressure until it fully clicks on. Now we can go ahead and put the rear cover back on. So this one, you need to make sure that the scroll wheel is lined up properly as well as the release button. So it can be a little bit finicky while still trying to deal with the tabs. And you also need to make sure that no cables are hanging out. Sometimes the cables, I guess, fall over and they can get pinched and you can damage them. So just make sure that you're not pressing this together until you've seen that everything is clear. So work your way around and make sure that everything's clicked in and then we'll move on to screwing the device together. Now we'll add the screws back in. So there's four screws that use the PH00 screwdriver. So this is what they look like just for your reference. They should go in fairly easily if you have everything clicked in properly. Now we're gonna add on the skate sticker again. So make sure that you line it up on one side and then press it in. It's not going to go on the most pretty most likely. So you're just gonna have to do your best. Once you have it pressed down, you're going to need to smooth it out. It's not exactly like you can see mine's pretty rough here. Later on, I came back and used a heat gun to smooth it out. So you may want to do that. But just for now, I'm just going to do it adequately and we'll carry on. And now your controller is done physically. So it should feel quite a bit better. Same with the other side if you did that one as well. And we're not quite done yet because we need to calibrate them yet. So let me show you how to do that. Now that we've finished installing everything, we're going to test out the controller to make sure that everything works. We're going to go to gamepadtester.com and test out all the buttons. And once we finish testing all the buttons, we're going to need to do a calibration and I'll show you why in just a second. And as you can see on my device, everything was successful. All of the buttons are working. I can pull up Legion Space and the little pullout menu. But very likely for you guys, just like it is for me, the joysticks aren't going to be perfectly aligned. Like you can see my right joystick is not quite in the center there. But this is a very simple fix. All we have to do is a calibration. Now that we've confirmed all the buttons are working, let's go ahead and calibrate our joysticks by pressing the left joystick and the left trigger together or the right joystick and the right trigger. So we're going to do the right side first. After pressing the right joystick as a button for a few seconds along with RT together, you'll see that the RGB turns blue and it has a spinning motion. What you need to do then is rotate the joystick fully a few times and then press RT twice to disable this mode. The RGB will flicker a few times before returning to solid. Now for the left side, we need to do the same thing. We're going to press the left joystick in as a button and press LT. After a few seconds, you're going to see that the RGB is going to turn blue just like it did on the right side. So rotate your joystick a few times and then just tap LT twice. If the RGB starts to flicker like it did on mine and it didn't seem to disable, just press the LT button twice again. It seems like it didn't take on mine. So that may happen for you. And one quick note, if you're having trouble entering this mode, I had this on a second controller where it just would not enter the calibration mode. Just press this reset pin. You can use something like a paper clip to press it and then it'll reset the controller. 
even after resetting the controller, sometimes it's stubborn and doesn't want to enter the calibration mode. I had one controller that I did that it took 25 times before it entered calibration. If you have that issue, you can also open Legion Space, go to the controller settings and adjust something that sometimes can kick it out of being stuck. Assuming you were able to successfully calibrate your joysticks, I recommend going back to GamepadTester.com and testing the circularity. You should find now that the joystick is perfectly centered and you should get roughly a 2% error. This is the same average error that you get with the stock joystick, so that means that everything worked. If not, go ahead and run the calibration one more time. Now that you've finished the mod, you can enjoy your nice tight joysticks. I recommend trying out a first person shooter. And if you have a DualSense controller, test it against that. It likely feels very similar now. I hope this video was helpful. Leave me a like or subscribe if you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.